Hi, this is Eric with ESI Group and the Industry Marketing Team, and I wanted to present to you today um, another example of how we can do human-centric product and process validations of new and novel equipment that we might be engineering for various purposes. In this case, I'm focused on a heavy machinery product. Um, this is a wheeled loader, and this is a rather large wheel loader. And one of the things that I might be considering is um, in the design of this wheel loader, how well engineered is this for the human beings to operate? Right. And one of the things that we focus on at ESI Group when we talk about our implementation and use of virtual reality for engineering challenges is we want to help people address that intersection of activity between the human beings, people, the products that they might be working on and the processes in which they utilize or work with those products. And in this case, we're focused on the product process of operating this wheel loader. So let's go ahead and start with the first assumption. Um, I just climbed up the ladder to come up to this wheel loader. I want to get into the wheel loader. So first thing I might do is reach down, grab this door handle and open up the door. And as I swing this door open, um, one thing you might notice is I'm starting to get crowded by the door while standing on this platform. And this is one of those things that, um, you know, when we're doing our engineering design on screen and on the tube, we might not always realize just what it's like to stand up here on this platform while trying to open this door up. And one of the things that I notice is that in order for me to open this door all the way, I really have to just kind of dangle my body over the edge of that platform, kind of unnervingly. Now, if this was a real uh, wheel loader and I had the handles in front of me, I could grab onto that handle and I could just lean over, over open air with my toes, just grasping onto that platform and swing this door open. Uh, but one of the things is that that's not a universally comfortable thing for people to do. So if anybody was nervous about heights, they wouldn't like standing on this platform to open the door. And maybe somebody's probably watching this video thinking to myself or thinking to themselves, Eric, you don't stand on that platform to open the door. You open the door while you're climbing up the ladder. And that's possibly why this door handle is so low on that door, with the assumption being that as I'm climbing up the ladder, I reach up open up this door, swing the door all the way open, and then I continue climbing all the way up. And if that's the assumption, then more power to you. If that's not the assumption, maybe this is something that I would identify as a possible design consideration, that maybe it's time to go back to the drawing board and consider a different way of doing this. Um, I'm also going to want to simulate here today what it's like to sit in the cockpit. And I have my office chair right here. And I'm going to do a really kind of brute force simple way of achieving mixed reality. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my navigation mode. I'm going to, instead of walking on the ground level, I'm going to hover. And I'm going to hover until... I'm going to hover until the seat that I'm physically sitting in well aligns with the virtual seat inside of my virtual reality. So I'm just using my virtual reality hands. I'm resting them on the cushion right next to my leg. And I'm just raising and lowering myself in the virtual world until I find that the seat and my physical seat and the virtual seat are very well synchronized. So now I feel like I'm actually sitting inside of the seat. And this is very much the vantage point that this is the visibility that a person of my height and stature would have while sitting inside of the seat. Now, if I wanted to do a far more accurate version of this, many of our customers working in industry do, in fact, use um, tracked objects, tracked seats, and they can mount the um, virtual reality tracking pucks onto things like the seat and orient the virtual world fixed in a way relative to something like the seat. We call that a seating buck study. So in this case, what I might want to do for my you know, brute force simple seating buck study that I'm doing just here in my home office, maybe the first thing I want to validate is can I reach everything while I'm sitting here in the cockpit? So I want to reach up and see can I reach um, this radio knob, if that's the radio knob that I have to hit. And you can see that in order for me just to touch that button, I really have to lift myself up out of the seat and uh, break the seated position. So I'm no longer safely seated. I now have to actually kind of stand up in order to reach that. Same thing for all of these controls over here. So that makes me wonder whether or not this is a very sustainable seating position 
or if this is going to be a challenge for anybody five foot six or less, because that's how tall I am. So that makes me wonder whether or not this has a good operability for a wide or diverse range of users, or only for people who are probably, maybe somebody six foot tall can easily reach this, but anybody probably shorter than, you know, six foot or my height, five six, they would have problems reaching that. Um, other things that I could check out is um, right next to me here in the driver's seat, there's this fire extinguisher, right? That's quite useful to have in case there was a problem with the internal combustion engine behind me. Uh, but one thing that comes to mind immediately is that if I was operating this vehicle, it did have an emergency that required me to use the fire extinguisher. I'd have to get up, climb out of my seat, go onto that platform, and then try to make it past this door in order to get back to the engine compartment cleanly. So uh, that does make me wonder whether or not this is in fact a well safety minded design to make the door uh, arranged in that manner. Um, some other things that I might be curious about is what is my real visibility while in this vehicle? So we have uh, right now, I can see that the mirrors are located and I can pretty much see the mirrors. I'm not doing a real time reflection of those mirrors. Those are just uh, baked in cube maps onto that mirror. But I do have a reasonable understanding of visibility through the mirrors. I can see that if I have to adjust this mirror, I again would have to stand up practically in order to adjust that mirror so that I could see back behind my driver's seat. So that does in fact make me question whether or not this is a great working condition. I'm going to go ahead and open up the menu and let's see what happens when I lift and lower the bucket and what happens to my visibility when I do that. And as I lower the bucket all the way, oh my goodness, what do I see? I can see a couple of people apparently have been standing in front of the bucket the entire time I've been doing this demo. And that makes me question whether or not I have good enough visibility while this bucket is here. And one of the things that I noticed about this particular bucket design is that they did cut these kind of little slots in there. And I don't know if those slots are specifically for drainage or if they were for visibility, but if they are for visibility, they do help a little bit. They do allow me to see past my bucket in certain configurations, but it's still not super easy to be able to be sure that I'm seeing past that bucket. You'll also see they cut a similar series of slots on the other side, right, on the sides there, and those do look like they were also slit for the same way, maybe to, again, improve visibility. But the angle at which those slits are cut through this thick stock makes it such that some of those slots are totally imperceptible, that you can't even see through them just because of the angle going through thick material. Well, hopefully that was helpful for you today and makes up for the fact that the uh, video recording that we had made from our ESI Live earlier this year was a little bit less than perfect of a recording. And hopefully that helped you better understand a bit more about ICI Do and how we use it to help resolve human-centered product and process validation issues. Thank you.